Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today I'm going to be continuing my Hero Quest restoration project by painting what is one of the highlights of the set, the gargoyle. When it comes to the gargoyle, you kind of have a couple of different choices of how to approach the painting. You can, of course, paint it like a gargoyle, go for stone colours, but that doesn't really do justice to this wonderful miniature. So another option is to embrace what it really is, which is a bloodthirster, and paint it like a bloodthirster. And that's the approach I'm going to be taking here. However, this gargoyle really does look like something that stepped out of a Saturday morning television show from the 80s. And keeping that in mind, I'm going to make it a slightly cartoony paint style, rather than something that looks really scary and realistic. So to start with, you can see I've kept the head separate to make it easier to paint, and I've given the whole miniature a spray of Chaos Black. And I'm going to start with the skin tone with Fur Brown, which is an army painter paint. But this is a really nice tone to start with for a darker skin tone. And I'm going to apply this in two thin coats over the hands, the arms, all of the exposed areas of flesh. Not forgetting the back of the legs and of course the face, which is separate. And then when that's dry, I'm going to switch to Bugman's Glow and I'm thinning this ever so slightly and I'm applying it to the raised areas. We're going to pick out all of the muscles, all of the definition. And for this miniature, because it is a highlight in the set, I am going to spend a little bit more time on this than I have on some of the other painting, but this is still going to be a relatively quick and simple paint job. Once that is completely dry, I'm going to give all of the skin areas a coat of Reichland Flesh Shade. That's going to tie the two colours together that we've applied so far and provide the recessed shading. Then when that's dry, we're going back to Bugman's Glow. Again, we are thinning it and we're going to reapply it to the raised muscle areas. We're reviving the colours and also helping to emphasise all of that shading that we've done. And you can do a couple of coats of this if you want focusing more and more on raised areas with each one, but I'm just doing one coat of Bugman's Glow because I am going to apply another coat of a different color as a final highlight. This is one of those things where you can just keep going until you're happy with what you've got. And of course, we must not forget to do all of the highlighting on the face as well. You can see I've attached this head to the end of a pin vise. That's just to make it a little bit easier to work with. Next, I'm switching to Tanned Flesh, which is another army painter paint, and this is for the final highlight, just thin lines over the very tops of the muscled areas. This is optional, but as I said, this is a really nice miniature, and it always draws focus when it's on the board, so I think it's worth paying a little bit more attention to it and taking some of the highlights just that one stage further. Next, we are switching to Balthazar Gold, and we are going to apply this to the armor. This is going to be on the ruff around the neck. It's going to be on the large belt with the skull motif on it, and also on all of the leg armor and the braces. We are, of course, using a classic corn color scheme here. We have gold, and we will be using red as well. We want good coats of this, you can apply two thin coats if you want. The most important thing, of course, is not to get it over the skin that we've painted because that skin is finished. Next, when that is dry, we're going to apply Agrax Earthshade. That is going to knock down the brightness of the gold colour and give it a nice old coppery colour. It's also, of course, going to provide the recessed shading that's going to help that skull motif on the front pop out and make everything look a little bit more natural. And then I'm going back to Balthazar Gold and I'm going to pick out the raised areas of the armor with an edge highlight. This is just gonna brighten up those raised parts. You can probably consider this as an optional step, but it does make a difference. If you really want to brighten the armor up, you can go to another color as well, like Retributor Armor for a final highlight as well, but I didn't wanna to go to that stage. Next, I'm switching to Lead Belcher, and this is for the small amount of chainmail armor on the front of the miniature, and there is a couple of buckles on the back of the miniature that will get the Lead Belcher as well, and also, of course, the big sword. So a nice smooth coat of this 
over those remaining armor details. You can, of course, if you want, do all of the armor in Lead Belcher rather than using the gold, and you will get a very different look to your gargoyle. The central part of the sword will be painted with some fiery colors, but for now we can just put Lead Belcher over the whole thing to give us a base coat to work from. Next I'm using Null Oil and this is going to go over that Lead Belcher. Again to knock down the colour, to make it a little bit less bright, but also to do all of the recessed shading and help define the edges of those recessed details. Now with White Scar slightly thinned down, I'm going to paint the inset of the sword. This is going to be in preparation for painting some fiery colours. And I will point out that I kind of paint the fiery areas of this miniature in reverse, in that I will have the darker colours at the base of the sword working their way up to white at the top. Really, when you have fire, the white part of the fire is the hottest part, so that will be at the base of the fire, and it will work out towards the reds and then even the blacks at the end. But I thought it looked cooler the way that I'm doing it in this video. And you can see here I'm also picking out the teeth with white scar. The Eschen Grey is going to be used on just the handle of the sword and the handle of the whip. And you will notice that the whip has also gone white because that got a coat of white scar too. And there are two straps on the reverse of the miniature that also get Eschen Grey. Next I'm going to apply Cassandora Yellow to the recessed part of the sword to start building up that yellowy fire colour. I'm also going to apply it to most of the whip just leaving white at the very tip. And we're going to apply several different colours to these weapons. But while that's drying we're going to use Mephiston Red to paint the recessed areas of the armour. So each panel of the armour will get two thin coats of Mephiston Red. It's not necessary to do this, but I do think it looks nicer than leaving it as plain gold. And of course, the wings on the back will be getting a coat of Mephiston Red as well. Two thin coats of Mephiston Red will be enough to get good coverage on these wings. And then I'm going to use Army Painter Red Tone. I'm going to apply this red tone to about half of the Cassandora Yellow that's on the blade of the sword. And we're also going to apply it on about half to three quarters of the whip as we continue to build up the fiery colors there as well. And then we're also going to use red tone on all of the little panels of the armor and we are also going to apply a coat all over those wings to get some recessed shading on those creases. Next, while that's drying, we're going to deal with the eyes. We're going to use Pallid Witch Flesh, which I've slightly thinned down brace the miniature and paint in lines of white on each eye. And then we're going to use Abaddon Black to dot in the pupils. Just take care with this. And if you can hold your breath for long enough, you should have something that ends up kind of like that. I'm pretty happy with those. So next I have attached the head to the miniature and I'm going to use some Agrax Earthshade to help pick out the teeth. And I will also apply a little bit of that Agrax Earthshade to the nose of the miniature to help define the nostrils. I'm now switching to Wild Rider Red. I'm going to thin this down a lot and I'm going to apply this on the whip. And with each coat, you will see that there will be a little bit more of the previous color left behind. Evil Sun Scarlet is next. Same process, thinning it down a lot and going about halfway up the whip. So we're getting darker and darker colors towards the base. The final color is the Mephiston Red, which only goes on about a quarter of the whip. And again, this is thinned down a lot. The thinned down Mephiston Red is also going to be applied to the most raised areas of the wings. And you're probably going to need two coats of that to really help those highlights pop. But once you have done that, you basically have a finished miniature. You have a finished Bloodthirster slash Gargoyle. 
And that's where I'm going to leave this miniature myself, except for, of course, I will need to paint the flagstones on the base. I'm not going to cover that in this video. There is a separate video on my channel where I show you how I have painted all of my Hero Quest bases. So you can check that video out if you want to. But for me, this is a finished piece. And I guess that's it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.